Hey everybody, so I'm back for another Currently Reading. Four books that I am reading right now that I need to make sure you're hearing all about. I have some opinions early on in my reading experience and I cannot wait to tell you all about them. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. Um, it is chilly but not raining here in Northern California, so I cannot complain. Um, and I am reading some amazing books right now. Work is about to get super, super hectic. I'm changing jobs at the beginning of May. No, sorry, beginning of June. And so I am prepping for all of that, trying to wrap up what I do and then get ready for something new all at the same time, which as you all know in the working world can be crazy. Um, and I am trying to read because I have so many amazing books to read. And I am here to tell you about four today. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, please get these books from your local independent bookstore. I think all of these books are out or are coming out very, very soon. Uh, so you should be able to get them very quickly. Or if you're a library user, get your library to get you a copy right now. Just get them, order them, pre-order them, get them on that list. So let's start with the book that I am actually the furthest in, and that is The Postcard by Anne Barrest. This is translated from the French by Tina Cover, and uh, this is from Europa Editions. I think I may have said that already. I think when I hauled this book, I talked about it. So it is my understanding that this book is very, very popular in France. Very popular. It has done very, very well, nominated for many, many awards. Um, the premise of this book is that there is this family that at the very beginning, they receive a postcard. And on that postcard is the, are four names of four family members that they lost to the Holocaust. Our main character, 15 years later or so, sits down. She's pregnant, about to have a child. And she sits down with her mother, who is like a chain-smoking French woman, um, and tells the story, like the, the story of their family, their Jewish family, throughout, right, right prior to, through World War II, and everything that went on. Um, and you learn about her grandfather, his marriage, his children, all of that. All of this is her grandmother is one of the children that survived um, the, the uh, Holocaust, uh, but the rest of her family did not. And so we find that the mom has sort of been investigating this. Um, and it's a story. It's really the story of this family throughout time and sort of the inner... Every once in a while, um, our main character will interrupt and ask questions. We'll get historical relevance. We'll get historical facts to sort of put things into perspective. Um, it is a family drama, a family saga, like just like the ones that we really love. I will say it is very plot heavy. So it is really just like this happens, this happens, this happens. It doesn't have sort of any lyrical language to it. Um, it doesn't have that. It is very much a driven narrative by the story of this family, which I believe is based upon... Um, Anna Barrest's real family. Um, and yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it. I wish it had a little more nuance to the language, but the story and the family and the characters and the decisions are really transfixing. Um, and I mean, the thing is, I sort of know what's going to happen and it makes me sad to sort of be reading towards that outcome. Um, and I'm excited to see what Anne does after that. Like, what does she do with the story? Um, and I can't imagine that she's going to end it with that, uh, the tragedy, right? So what does it do? How does the family persevere and all of that? That's what I'm really interested in. So that's The Postcard by Anne Barrest. This is, again, translated from the French by Tina Cover. I was going to look it up, but I knew I knew the answer. Out now, you can get this. It's on all bookshelves, and that is by Europa Edition. Okay. Okay, so I am currently reading three other books that I want to tell you about. I am going to start with the one that I'm not the surest of, um, and that is Lesbian Love Story by Amelia Pozanza. 
Posanza. This it says it's a memoir in archives. And let me tell you what the premise is. So um, Amelia starts by telling us that she is obsessed with collecting the stories of lesbians throughout history. And she has sort of decided to tell us, I think it's seven different stories of, yeah, seven different stories of different lesbian couples through time. And she's done a lot of research, clearly. Um, and the first section I am in is about, I'm, and I'm, you know, 40 or so pages into this book, is about Mary, who is a fascinating woman in history, learning about, her. she published her own memoir about her life as a lesbian. And it is very interesting. However, um, Amelia admits up front that uh, she isn't able to piece all of these stories together. So at times, and she tells you when, she she goes into her own fictionalized narrative, trying to fill the gaps or the spaces. And she tells you, hey, I think this happened, or I believe this is what occurred. Um, but you know that she's making it up because she readily admits there's going to be holes in these stories. The, you know, the stories of the queer community were often shunted to the side or hidden away. So she doesn't have all of the pieces to the puzzle. I am 100% bought in to when she's sort of diving into the historical pieces and telling us the non-fiction-y part of the story. I'm not sure how I feel about the fiction part yet. I am enjoying it but I want to see how it all comes together. Um, I think Amelia is a very talented writer. I really like the, the premise of this book. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how it's all going to work. I'm not sure, um, but I'm not stopping reading. I'm completely invested, um, and I'm really interested to see what she's going to do. So that is Lesbian Love Story, A Memoir and Archives by Amelia Posanza, out from Catapult. Okay. Then, uh, th you know what? I am reading, a I said this in my last video, I am reading a lot of stuff with lesbian love stories or characters or stuff in it. I just I am right now, and it's fantastic. I just, I don't know why. They're just the books I'm picking up. The next book I want to tell you about is The Lost Wife by Susanna Moore. This is out from Knopf. I didn't know anything about this book when it arrived, um, and I didn't even really know what to expect. I don't know who Su Susanna Moore is, though she has published a number of novels. Um, uh, her book, My Old Sweetheart, was blurbed by Joan Didion, so clearly I'm the, the one not in the know here. Um, this book is set in 1850. 55, our main character is Sarah. She is in an abusive relationship with, and uh, she has one child, I believe, and she decides that she is going to leave, and I believe she's like in New York City. No, she's in Rhode Island. She's in Rhode Island, and she's going to travel west to um, Missouri, to the Missouri um, Territory, because she's received letters from a friend of hers that are two years old, um, about there's work for women in the Missouri Territory and you should come out here. She, you find out that this is a young woman that she knew while her and her mother worked at an asylum um, for women who, you know, I'm not gonna go into it. You should read it, you should read it. But what happens is she, um, in the middle of the night, leaves her husband and heads west and winds up in the Missouri Territory. The book is so good at talking about how tough it was just to get to Missouri and the challenges she's going to face as a single woman when she gets there. You meet interesting side characters. Um, you sort of see how the world, I mean, she's going to fight through it, right? But there's a lot of obstacles in her way. It's just like, I don't know how to explain it. I'm finding it very, very, like I almost feel like Susanna Moore is telling me a story as I read it. Like she's just sitting here talking to me, telling me the story of this woman that she has researched and known. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I don't, I don't know anything about it. Um, if so, if you like sort of um, these uh, 1855 tales of women going out on their own and figuring it out in the Missouri Territory, I'm telling you, this is the book. I'm really liking it. So that's The Lost Wife by Susanna Moore out from Knopf. Okay, so last but not least in this stack is a book that I didn't know how to feel about, um, but once I started it, I am obsessed, and that is Yellow Face by R.F. Quing, and this is out from Murrow. Now, R.F. Quing is known for really writing fantasy slash 
it's fantasy, I guess. She, Babel was her big book that was just out. She has the Poppy War series. I have read the Poppy War and I have read Babel. I liked the Poppy War a lot. Babel got a little lost in the ways, in the weeds with me at the end of that book. But Yellow Face is her sort of first contemporary novel to be published. And it is a doozy so far. So we have two main characters here. We have June and Athena, okay? Um, they are both writers. They both went to Yale. They became friends, really associates, but they became friends because they both knew that they wanted to be writers. Now, June and Athena published in the same stuff in college and stuff, but Athena's career takes off post-college. She is nominated for all these awards. Her books are considered revolutionary, and but she leads a very solitary life, and you find out that June is very, very jealous. June had one novel published. It didn't do as well as she was hoping. Um, her publisher, her um, agent, don't really seem interested in what uh, is going to happen next in June's career. So Athena and June are out to dinner one night. They're having drinks. They go home to Athena's house to continue having drinks. Um, and Athena dies. And I'm not going to tell you why, because it is the or how, because it is the craziest thing. <laughs> so I was like, what just happened? Um, but uh, Athena has just finished the manuscript of a book that she feels is going to be sort of her magnus opus. And June takes that home. And she starts to rework it. Uh, it's a first draft for Athena, so there's a lot of work to be done. But she starts to rework it. And she winds up submitting it to her agent as her own work. And what happens once that bullet train starts going full speed ahead and how that affects June and as things sort of start to unravel, unravel. Um, I'm, I am turning the pages so far. I am fascinated um, sort of with even like the intrigue of it all, even though really you know what's going to happen in the beginning because it's in the blurb, uh, but it's so well done. June is such an interesting voice so far. I'm really interested to see what R.F. Quang does with this moving forward. So that's Yellow Face by R.F. Quang. That's out from William Morrow and you can get your hands on it. And I want to say thank you for them for sending me this beautiful finished copy. Um, I'm obsessed. So those are the four books that I am currently reading. Got some feelings, I hope. I hope I interested you to at least pick up one or two or three of them. How about four? Pick up all four. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I could not do this without you. I thank you so much. If you are new to my channel, I hope you stick around. I hope you hit subscribe and you come back for more. As always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everyone.